Oh, shit. You guys are moving? Yeah, to that old bakery spot just down the street. Bigger, more room, we can actually hire JC full time. Nice. So when's the move? We still need to renovate the place. The last owners didn't really understand words like maintenance or even cleaning, I don't think. Cupcakes were good, though. Oh, delicious. You could really taste the health code violations. Right? So probably a couple of months. We've got signs all over the place letting people know, and we've got to hire more staff. Hey, welcome to Cafe Latte. What's up? Oh, not much. I just need a coffee and a table. I'm meeting a hot date here. Nice. First date, second date? First date, online, so hopefully she's not catfishing. Gotta love internet dating. Good luck. Be safe. I don't need luck. I'm an alpha male. Women can't resist me. Okay, buddy. So when you say alpha male, are you using the old, outdated, and frankly wrong wolf studies from the 80s and 90s that were immediately corrected when they realized that pack alphas are not dominating or aggressive? What are you talking about? Of course alpha wolves are dominating and aggressive. They're the ones in charge, and humans act exactly the same way. No, they don't, and neither do wolves. That study was tossed out almost as soon as it was published. Wolf pack dynamics do not work like that, or they would implode within days. You don't know anything. I'm a werewolf. Oh, oh, I get it now. You're intimidated by the presence of a real alpha. None of those are the words I would use. Speaking as a werewolf and someone who actually knows a thing or two about wolf pack structures, pack units are family units, and the alpha male and alpha female are the parents. Which means when crossing that behavior over to humanity and humanoid species, the real alpha male would be the dad friend, if not the dad. What? No. Yeah. The true alpha males are constantly reminding everyone to hydrate. They're probably really good with kids. He has an endless stream of snacks and medicine in his backpack, volunteers as designated driver more often than not, and is the holder of the team brain cell. At least until the mom friend shows up to relieve him of that duty. The holder of the what? Uh, they're in charge of making sure we don't do anything stupid or dangerous. And when they fail to talk their friends out of doing anything stupid and dangerous, like stealing fruit from an orchard owned by a fey hating dick with a gun, they go with them anyway to make sure they don't die. And he deserved it, okay? And those apples were delicious. And it was the 50s. Security systems weren't a thing. Here's your coffee. Four dollars. An alpha mentality isn't nearly as much about leadership as it is about caretaking. Although there is often overlap. Here's your money. And you, this is just beta male bullshit. Trying to make yourself feel better by saying, Oh, it's not about muscle or dominating or being a real man. It's about feelings. You're such a beta. That is such a weak insult, dude. Your whole shtick, honestly, just reeks of insecurity. It's given off very omega bitch vibes. We'll see who's the real Omega after my date. Oh, I do feel bad for whoever he's meeting with. Ah, uh, that would be me. Ah, not that I'm gonna let him know after that whole show. Uh, here, I'm big and bulky. He won't see you if I stand like this. Thanks. I'm just gonna grab an iced tea with Siren Song and slink out of here. Unless you're looking for a date. I am not. I'm taken. Flattered, though. Rats. Thank you. Here's a 10. Keep the change. And she's clear. And Alpha Male has his nose in his phone and didn't notice. Perfect. She dodged a bullet. Seriously. Have you hydrated today? Caffeine does not count. Welcome to Cafe Latte. Today's special is the S'mores Mocha, which utilizes chocolate and marshmallow flavor, some essence of hellfire for that smoky bonfire taste, and is topped with whipped cream but sprinkled with graham cracker sugar. Oh, that's tempting. But I was wondering if you had a magical ingredient that would help with pregnancy or anything that I should know about before I order. As you can see, I am a giant pimple that's about to be popped. Not the phrase I would use. I would avoid anything to do with banshees or unicorns. The science on them is not confirmed, but there is a worrying correlation between those ingredients and pregnancy issues. Pixie dust should be consumed in moderation. Everything else should be fine. If you're looking for a good luck spell or charm to assist in a smooth delivery, I can sell you one of those, or you can go to the Stoughton Street Witches. They have several health-related charms, and frankly, they're more practiced at that branch of magic than I am. Way ahead of you there. Uh, I think I'll just take a small coffee, light roast, room for cream and sugar. 
Of course, that will be three dollars. Oh my god. Seriously? Oh Jesus, here we go. Ma'am, I'll get to you in a minute. You're seriously going to sell this woman caffeine? And you, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're not supposed to drink coffee while pregnant. It is just astounding how many people think they can suddenly tell me what I can and cannot do now that I have a parasite in my gut. Unless you're my doctor, I'm going to need you to shut up. No, you should be arrested for child endangerment. Okay, first of all, it is a fetus, not a child, and will not count as a child for the purposes of tax returns, abuse, or whether I can drive in the carpool lane until it is out of me and no longer physically a part of my body. Secondly, most doctors and scientists agree that caffeine is fine for pregnant people in small doses, one or two small cops maximum. Well, I heard that you shouldn't drink it while pregnant, ever. Which brings me to part three. For every scholarly article or wives' tale telling you not to eat or drink something, there's another saying it's fine or even encouraged. Don't eat seafood, but salmon is great for you. Definitely eat dairy for the protein, but not soft cheeses. Don't eat pre-prepared food or leftovers. In fact, don't eat anything. You don't want to gain weight while pregnant. Frankly, the only undeniable gospel truth about what you should or should not consume is tobacco, drugs, and alcohol. Everything else? Whatever. How dare you? You are, you are a terrible mother. I'll wait a couple of decades before passing that judgment. But you want to know the truly magical thing about all of this? It is 100% none of your business. It is absolutely my business when you're endangering a child. Except she's not, and you will be silent. You will remain silent for up to three years, or until you learn to keep your nose out of other people's business, unless there is truly a threat to their physical or mental health. Yeah, right now you're the threat to my mental health, unless I can get some caffeine in me so I can better deal with your bullshit. Right here, ma'am. Evening, sir. We're going to be closing up soon, so don't get too comfortable. Don't worry, Cyrus. I won't be long. Do I know you? Not yet. Where's your boss? In the back, where's yours? In the White House. Ah. Boss, CIA's trying to recruit us again. You don't know that. Okay, yeah, maybe. Could I get a decaf while we wait? Large. Oh, this song and dance again. Come on. Why don't you come over and join me and Miss Violet, Cyrus? Or do you go by Bob these days? Either works. I'm rather surprised you're here, considering the attitude of the last agent. Oh yeah, he was pretty insulted that you refused to help your country in the Middle East. Your government handled that whole mess atrociously. Yeah, it's been a real downhill slide for you guys since the 50s. You both helped us out before that, though. In both World Wars, the Civil War, even a bit of early Cold War espionage. We're simply extending the invitation to help your country once again. <coughs> you have a very selective memory. Or did your employers conveniently leave out all the times your government has been at odds with us? The Underground Railroad that we were a part of was illegal, of course. The suffragist movement, the civil rights movement, countless labor movements, the Fay rights movement. It seems that all of our efforts to assist you since the 1840s meant absolutely nothing in terms of guaranteeing us equal rights as your other citizens until we forced your hand in the 60s and 70s. Until you forced our hand. The unnamed sorceress is the one who publicly threatened to curse every politician who opposed giving us equal rights and opportunities, and is the one who followed through on those who continued their oppression until the 70s. I am not called the unnamed sorceress. And you had nothing to do with that. Hmm. <laughs> Look, the past is the past. You owe us. You've benefited from our shelter and opportunities for over two centuries. Yes, and we've done what we can to improve the state of our adopted country, but we have seen no reason to put our lives on the line or expend any sort of effort to assist the spread of American imperialism, especially given the current offenses you are continuously inflicting on anyone who isn't a rich, able-bodied, neurotypical, male, white, cishet human. You know, we could just force you. You might not have put your real name on the paperwork, but there are other ways to get to you. Even a magic cafe won't stand up to bulldozers. No, you won't. And why shouldn't we? Do you know how easy it would be to take over this country? I mean, most simply and ethically, I could just go through a series of glamour disguises and identities and keep running for president, or Supreme Court, or any high-ranked official. We do regular blood tests to ensure that doesn't happen. 
Those are not infallible. Your names are also all public information. Repeated, layered cursing of ill health for all of you would be taxing, but I don't see any of them, especially those in their 80s, surviving it for more than a handful of years, even months. A sword would handle the rest. I've certainly ended other countries with it. Do with the lobbyists first. You know they're the ones who actually run the country. Of course, all of that would take so much effort and energy. Not just to get the power, but to keep it. I grew up in a royal family. I've had my fill of rulership and politics, and I know I would be absolutely miserable as Queen of the United States. That misery would turn to resentment for both the title and the people I'm supposed to protect and govern, which is a recipe for a tyrannical and or disastrous reign. But pressure me about this again and I'll have to seriously reconsider. Do let us know if this nuclear protected superpower of an empire is actually under threat from invaders. It's been a while since I've got to properly shank a bitch. So, you're interested in working part-time, was it? Yeah, I'm still in high school. Of course, education is important. So perhaps weekends and the odd weekday afternoon? Sure. And why are you interested in working here? I want to hook up with that hot male fae. I did not mean to say that. I enchanted your chair to compel anyone who sits in it to tell the truth. Well, can you blame me? I see you have almost 10 years of experience in food service. Yeah, I do. Um, I thought I'd be doing this interview with the manager. I am the manager. And the owner. Really? But you're a woman! And why did you leave your last place of employment? Uh, well, I found out my boss was gay. That sounds bad, but he was also single. I didn't need him trying to flirt with me. Did he truly try to flirt with you? It was only a matter of time. I'm looking for a place where I can feel safe, you know? The kitchen manager is non-binary. Goodbye. I gotta hand it to you, babe. You're taking the whole major life change and moving thing really well. Well, cafe latte moving doesn't really impact my routine except in terms of location, which is just down the street. It's a slow change in which I'm getting plenty of warning, and it's largely positive as it means my friends and SO are getting more financially stable. But please take the chair with you. Oh yes, we'll be keeping your comfy chair and adding a few more. Do I detect a sunburn? JC and I went to the water park, my treat to celebrate the promotion. It's the big one, the one that's run by a bunch of selkies and mermaids, and they did that whole project where they built the water cleaner factory or dam or whatever it was so they can channel actual clean river water into the park instead of dumping a bunch of chemicals into it. And they had all of these slides and rides and a lazy river and a pizza joint. It was so fun. I've never been able to go there. We raced with some mermaids. We lost. Are you surprised? No. I mean, I was, a little. I mean, I expected to lose, just not that badly. But it's okay, because they bought us around for root beer. Whoa, free root beer? I should get my ass kicked at the water park more often. Welcome to Cafe Latte. Hey, I'm just here for the essence of Hellfire delivery, and I would also like to get some of those cookies. Good timing, I just restocked them. Sweet, how mad would you be if I just swipe a dozen? My coworkers love it. Go for it. Okay, feel free to call me a racist bitch if this is a racist question, but where are your coworkers located? You would probably call it hell. Well, what else would it be? Wait, is this one of those things where, like, we call China and Japan China and Japan, but they have their own names for their own nations and their own language? Yeah, sort of, yeah, but also it's not the torture, punishment, BDSM existence for dead people you mortals all seem to think it is. I mean, we're all alive over there. I have no idea what happens after you die. What a rip. There is evidence to believe the multidimensional traveling of different beings inspired several human myths, legends, and even religions. Really? Or it could all be real. Maybe there is a plane dedicated to punishing the sinful run by demons, but it ain't mine. We're all alive and dandy and keel over from heart attacks just like anyone else. Seriously? That is so cool. So, like, the fairies have their world in the Fey realm. You guys have another. It's called the Abyssal Realm, when you translate it to English, loosely. Earth is something of a hot spot for interdimensional portals, the Grand Central Station of planetary existence. 
Nobody really knows why, and several of those dimensions have one or two specific geographical connections to Earth, some of which come and go, others being more permanent. For instance, my home realm was primarily connected to the modern-day UK. Mermaids found their primary portals in the northern Atlantic, the Onis and Yokais mostly crossed over in Japan. Dragons just kind of popped up wherever. Oh, uh, could I get you to sign this for the Hellfire Order? So you guys just lean into the whole Fires of Hell thing to sell more goodies? Yep. Essentially, yes. Also, while the Christians are mostly dicks, the Satanists? Oh, they know how to party. In fact, a chunk of them founded a whole city on my plane. I grew up in its suburbs. Oh, would that be that little city up on Lava Lake? Gah! I, I did not see you there. Sorry, baby, I didn't mean to frighten you. I only asked because one of my cousins went to live there looking for work, and she started a southern food restaurant and asked two adorable half-demon babies. One of them grew into his second set of horns. Mary Beth's table? That's the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've been there. I've met her. She, She's a devout Baptist, which is so weird because even casual Christians tend to avoid the abyssal realm, but she's really nice. Oh, she's always been a sweetheart and a fine cook. I know where we're going on our next date. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for interviewing me. Of course, Miss Husnia. You pronounce that better than most people. I spent a bit of time in the Middle East, but that was ages ago. My Arabic is atrocious. So is mine, despite my grandfather's best efforts. Uh, I'm hoping for a part-time position instead of full-time. Is that all right? Of course. Now, I see you worked a handful of food and customer service positions, but you stopped about four years ago to become a housekeeper? That's the professional term for I became pregnant and decided to be a stay-at-home mother. Ah. How many children? Three. My eldest just turned four, and I had twins about seven months ago. My husband works full-time for the state, and it's been more than enough to provide for us, but we live in an apartment, and we're looking to own a house, so we decided that I could help build our savings by braving the field once again. So you cooked and cleaned for your family full-time during those four years, and before that worked at a place called Hassan's Mediterranean Grill? It's my uncle's restaurant. It's in the city, a bit too far out of the way from where we currently live. In Impeccable seafood, though, if you ever get the chance. The glazed salmon? Mmm. We go there to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. I see you were the saleswoman. I waited on his tables very well, yes. And what would you say is your biggest weakness? Ah! Of course the paper clips have iron. Oh, you poor dear. Let me see. Oh. Well, we're going to wrap that up with a band-aid just like a little bow. I have green and pink in my purse. Which would you like? So, um, on the subject of weaknesses, have you ever heard of mommy mode? So, Mr. Drex Smith, you're interested in the dishwasher position? Yes, ma'am. The website said it would be after school hours. You're still in high school. I'll be a senior this year. Excellent. Did you bring a resume? No. I've never worked a real job before, so there's nothing I can really put on one. Understandable, seeing as you've been alive less than 18 years. I did help my uncle with his warehouse, helping him move stuff in the back. It was kind of under the table, cash only, don't tell the IRS kind of deal. So the way most employment works throughout human history. What made you want to apply here? Well, I'm honestly not sure what I'm gonna do after I graduate. I don't know about college because of all the debt. Maybe a trade school would be better, or maybe I'd take a break? I have no idea, but I figured I should start saving up anyway. Besides, my parents could really use the cash. Dad just got laid off. I see. You mentioned in your application that you may need some accommodations? Yeah, I have ADHD. It's not that severe. I have meds that help. That's, that's another reason I wanted to get a job, so I can keep that bottle full. Health insurance is a joke. Uh, anyway, the only thing I need is noise-canceling earbuds to help block out excess noise. I'll still be able to hear you and anyone else who talks to me. It just cuts out the distractions and sensory issues. Oh, that's a non-issue. We'll also like to have to uh, provide you with a non-slip stool, given that the kitchen is built for human-sized creatures, but that's easy enough. Once you get comfortable working here, do you think at some point you'd like to do a little bit of work elsewhere, such as helping my baker make the goods or even front-of-the-house work with customers? Sure, but... Again, I'd have to be able to reach. I'm half human, but the height is definitely from the goblin side. Of course. And you should know once you graduate that full-time employees get full health and dental. Seriously? After you graduate. Oh, fine. My apologies for making you wait. We had an unexpected rush. Eh, it's fine. Just means you're doing good business, right? 
and I see on your application that you are gender fluid. What are your pronouns? Today it's she, her. Yesterday was they, them. Tomorrow or five minutes from now, who knows? I'll keep you posted. If your current shape is a bit stifling, you can relax. This room isn't big enough for a whole dragon, but I've heard certain parts get pinched when you shift. How did you eat? I'm not wearing glamour. There's no magic going on here. Right. Super powerful ancient fairy sorceress. Ah. Human skins are comfy, except for the horns, tail, and wings. Now you are a young dragon, it appears. 212, according to this? Yep, just hit adulthood a couple of decades ago. I used to do factory work during the wars, but that just got stifling. I like talking to people. Most of the stuff I've done since has been sales. I even worked for a kitchen appliance brand for a while in the 50s. You did a lot of volunteer work during the Fay Rights Movement. You were across the country, so that's why we missed each other. Uh, and now you currently volunteer at an animal shelter. Much as I would like to have a horde of dogs, I am both too broke and in too tiny of an apartment to make that work, so I get my dopamine when I can. So much for the gold hoarding stereotype. Oh, I would love to have a decent hoard large enough to pay for a cozy cave with a little library and some shelves for my dice collection, but all those thousand-year-old dragons have sucked up all the wealth and would literally rather be stabbed to death by a knight than share it with the rest of the community. I know the type. You clearly have people skills. What about baking and drinks? Drinks? Yes, or at the very least I know I can learn them quickly. Uh, baking? How quickly do you want to burn your place down? Noted. Can you start in three weeks? 